Have you ever wondered what it looks like when two massive storm systems decide to tag team an entire region? Well, we're about to find out. I'm watching something develop across Canada and the northern U.S. that honestly has me a little worried about this weekend. I'm Michael Thompson, and it's Wednesday evening, December 18th, 2024. You know, in all my years doing this, there are certain patterns that just grab your attention. This morning when I pulled up the pressure readings, I actually double-checked my computer because 979 millibars in Saskatchewan, that's serious storm territory. But here's the thing that really caught me off guard. This isn't just one system we're dealing with. There's a second one following right behind it. And when I saw that the second system is also showing 979 millibars, I started making some phone calls to see what emergency folks were thinking. You know what they told me? They're already setting up for blizzard conditions from northeastern Montana through northwestern Minnesota. Now, I don't want to be the bearer of bad news, but when the National Weather Service starts throwing around blizzard warnings in December, that gets my attention. So let me paint you a picture of what's happening right now. That first storm system hit Saskatchewan this evening with incredible intensity. We're talking about winds that are already hitting 90 to 100 miles per hour across Montana and Wyoming as I'm recording this. And here's where it gets interesting. Those winds aren't staying put. They're about to sweep into the Plain states around midnight tonight. If you're anywhere near the Black Hills, the Dakotas, parts of Nebraska, Colorado, or western Kansas, you're going to feel this thing. But wait! There's more to this story. Thursday morning, things could get really dicey around Rapid City, South Dakota. We're looking at winds potentially hitting 80 miles per hour from the north and west. That's not just hang on to your hat weather, that's stay inside weather. Now, before I dive into the specifics for each region, let me tell you something that really concerns me about the timing. This is all happening during one of the busiest travel weeks of the year, and some areas that don't usually see this kind of intensity are going to get hammered. So let me walk you through what each region can expect, starting with the areas that are going to get hit first and hardest. Let's start with our friends in the Mountain West, because you guys are already feeling this thing as I speak. Montana folks, especially you in the northern and eastern parts of the state, you're dealing with blizzard conditions right now. Billings, Great Falls, even down toward Missoula. Those winds I mentioned, they're screaming through your area as we speak. If you're anywhere along Highway 2, Interstate 90, or Highway 94, travel is becoming dangerous by the hour. Wyoming? You're not being spared either. Casper, Cheyenne, Rock Springs, you're going to see sustained winds of 40 to 50 miles per hour tonight. Interstate 80 through Wyoming is going to be particularly brutal Thursday morning. If you absolutely must travel, do it very early or wait until Friday. Move it into the northern plains. This is where things get really concerning for Thursday. North Dakota folks, especially around Bismarck, Minot, and Fargo, Thursday is going to be a complete write-off for travel. We're talking about 6 to 12 inches of snow falling at 1 to 2 inches per hour with winds gusting over 60 miles per hour. Highway 94, Highway 2, even Interstate 29, these are going to be whiteout conditions. Emergency services may not be able to reach you. South Dakota, you're getting a double whammy. The western part of your state is already dealing with those extreme winds. Rapid City, Spearfish, Hot Springs. You're looking at potential damage from those 80-mile-per-hour wind gusts Thursday morning. And then the eastern part of the state gets the snow and blizzard conditions as the system moves through. Sioux Falls, Aberdeen, Pierre. Thursday afternoon into evening is going to be rough. Plan to stay put. Now let's talk about Minnesota, and this is where I'm really concerned about folks who might not be expecting this intensity. Northwestern Minnesota, Dash Bemidji, Thief River Falls, Grand Rapids, you're in the bullseye for blizzard conditions tonight and Thursday. Highway 2, Highway 94, even Highway 10, these routes are going to be impassable for hours at a time. Twin Cities, folks, you're on the southern edge of this, so you might see some heavy snow, but the worst should stay north of you. Duluth and the North Shore, you're going to get lake effect enhancement on top of this system. Could be looking at significant accumulations. Moving east into Wisconsin, 
And this is where the storm starts to change character a bit. Northern Wisconsin, Superior, Ashland, Rhinelander. You're going to see heavy snow Thursday night into Friday. Green Bay, Appleton, even up toward Wausau. Plan for four to eight inches of snow with gusty winds. Milwaukee and Madison, you're more likely to see rain initially, then a changeover to snow as that cold air crashes in. Let me talk about Michigan for a moment because the Upper Peninsula is going to get walloped. Marquette, Escanaba, Iron Mountain, you're looking at 8 to 16 inches of snow from this system. Highway 2, Highway 28, these are going to be treacherous. If you don't absolutely need to travel, don't. Lower Michigan, you're going to see the southern edge of this system. Detroit, Grand Rapids, Lansing, mainly rain initially. But don't let that fool you. When that cold air arrives Friday, things are going to change quickly. Now, moving into the Great Plains states, and this is where the wind story really becomes important. Nebraska folks, especially in the western part of the state, North Platte, Scotts Bluff, Alliance, those winds are coming your way tonight. Interstate 80, Highway 30. If you're driving anything tall or pulling a trailer, Thursday mm. afternoon is going to be dangerous. Omaha and Lincoln, you'll see strong winds, but not quite the extreme conditions that areas further west are dealing with. Kansas, your northern counties are going to feel this. Goodland, Colby, Norton, high wind warnings are already up. Highway 36, Interstate 70 in northern Kansas. Use extra caution Thursday, especially if you're in a high-profile vehicle. Colorado, your eastern plains are going to get raked by these winds. Sterling, Fort Morgan, even up toward Greeley. Interstate 76, Highway 34. These east-west routes are going to be challenging Thursday afternoon. Now let's move into our Canadian friends, because you're not being spared by any means. Saskatchewan. That first storm is sitting right on top of you as I speak. Saskatoon, Regina, Prince Albert, you're in the thick of it. Highway 1, Highway 7, Highway 11. Travel is becoming extremely dangerous. If you're out there, find shelter soon. That second system on Friday is going to affect southeastern Saskatchewan and move into Manitoba. Manitoba folks, Winnipeg, Brandon, Thompson, Friday is going to be your rough day with the second wave of this storm. Highway 1, Highway 6, plan for difficult travel conditions Friday into Saturday. Ontario, especially the northern parts, Thunder Bay, Sault Ste. Marie, Sudbury, you're going to see heavy snow from that second system. Highway 17, the Trans-Canada, this could be particularly challenging Friday night into Saturday. Quebec, you're going to get hit by that tightly wound low I mentioned. Montreal, Quebec City, even down toward Sherbrooke. Highway 20, Highway 40. Significant snow accumulations are possible Friday night through Saturday morning. Now, let's talk about the areas that are going to see the transition zone effects. Iowa, folks, you're on the southern edge of this system, but don't think you're getting off easy. Northern Iowa, Mason City, Clear Lake, Decorah, you could see three to six inches of snow Thursday night. Des Moines, Cedar Rapids, Iowa City, you're more likely to see rain, but it's going to be windy and unpleasant. Illinois, the northern part of your state, is going to be right in that messy transition zone. Chicago, this is where it gets interesting. You're going to start with rain Thursday evening, but that could change to snow overnight. The exact track of this system will determine whether you see two inches or six inches, we'll be watching it closely. Rockford, Peoria, Quincy, you're in that zone where a small shift in the storm track makes a big difference. Indiana, northern counties like Fort Wayne, South Bend, Gary, you could see some accumulating snow Friday morning. Indianapolis, you're more likely to see just rain and wind, but temperatures are going to crash behind this system. Ohio, you're mostly going to see rain from this system, but those winds are going to be noticeable. Cleveland, Columbus, Cincinnati, gusty winds Thursday night into Friday with much colder air following. Now, I know some of you further south are thinking this doesn't affect you, but let me tell you about the other side of this story. The temperature crash that follows this system is going to be felt from Texas all the way to Florida. Missouri, you're going to see those winds I keep talking about. Kansas City, St. Louis, Springfield, 
gusty conditions Thursday night. Arkansas, Oklahoma, northern Texas, you might see some scattered showers, but the big story is the cold air that follows. We're talking about a 30 to 40 degree temperature drop in some areas within 24 hours. Tennessee, Kentucky, West Virginia, you're going to feel that cold air arrive Saturday morning. If you have any outdoor plants or plumbing that's not well protected, Friday night is the time to take care of that. Now, let me talk about what this means for travel and daily life across all these regions. Major airports, Minneapolis, Chicago O'Hare, Denver, Omaha, they're already adjusting operations for Thursday and Friday. If you're flying anywhere in the northern tier of states, expect delays and possible cancellations. Interstate highways, I-90, I-94, I-80, I-35, these major east-west and north-south routes are all going to be affected. Truckers, this is especially important for you. High-profile vehicle travel Thursday afternoon is going to be dangerous. The emergency services across all these regions are pre-positioning equipment and crews, but response times may be delayed during the worst conditions. Power companies from Montana to Michigan are moving crews into position for potential outages from high winds. School districts in the affected areas are already making decisions about Thursday and Friday classes. You know what really gets to me about all this? It's the human side of it. People are going to be stranded. Power's going to go out. Families are going to be worried. But here's what I've learned in all my years doing this. Communities that look out for each other get through these situations much better. Check on your elderly neighbors before this hits. Make sure they have what they need and a way to communicate if the power goes out. If you have a generator or extra supplies, think about who in your neighborhood might need help. For families with travel plans this weekend, here's my honest advice. Be flexible. If you can leave Wednesday instead of Thursday, do it. If you can wait until Saturday or Sunday, that's even better. The roads are going to be dangerous, flights are going to be canceled, and emergency services are going to be overwhelmed. It's just not worth the risk when you can wait a day or two and travel safely. Now, looking at the bigger picture, this seems to be part of a more active winter pattern we're moving into. I've been studying the extended forecast, and there are some interesting signals for what January and February might bring. There's a stratospheric warming event that I'm keeping an eye on. It's not massive, but these events can really shake up weather patterns. The European models are showing some intriguing patterns for late January, ridging near Alaska, which often means cold air gets pushed south. That polar vortex, the real atmospheric one, has been hanging out near Hudson Bay, and that could change how winter develops. I'm also seeing signals for a southeastern ridge that could bring some warmer weather to the Gulf Coast states. For January overall, it's looking like western Canada is going to be really cold. That's where the deep snowpack will build. The northern and eastern U.S. could see some significant cold shots, but the timing is still uncertain. The snowfall forecasts for late January are actually quite interesting, much more active than early January. Both the European and American models are showing this pattern where things really pick up around the middle of the month. For snow lovers in places like the Great Lakes, New England, and the Northern Plains, January might finally deliver. The models are showing a real increase in snowfall potential once we get past mid-January. It's like the atmosphere is going to shift into a different gear. Moderate activity early, then much more significant snow later. But let's get back to the immediate situation, because that's what matters most right now. If you're in any of the affected areas I mentioned, tonight is the time to make your final preparations. Stock up on essentials if you haven't already. Food, water, medications, batteries, flashlights. Make sure your phone is charged and you have a way to charge it if the power goes out. If you heat with electricity and have a fireplace or other backup heat source, make sure you have what you need to use it safely. For those of you with vehicles that might need to be used in an emergency, make sure they're winter ready. Full gas tank, emergency kit in the car, food, water, warm clothes, blankets, basic tools. And please, if you absolutely must travel during this storm, tell someone exactly where you're going and when you expect to arrive. The silver lining in all this is that these systems do move through relatively quickly. By Saturday, conditions should be improving significantly across most areas, even though it's going to be much colder. Sunday looks much better for travel if you can wait that long. The cleanup and recovery will take time, but the dangerous weather part of this should be mostly over by then. You know, 
One thing I've learned in all my years of forecasting is that Mother Nature has a way of reminding us who's really in charge. We can predict these storms pretty well now, but we still have to respect their power and plan accordingly. The communities that do best in situations like this are the ones where people look out for each other. A neighbor checking on another neighbor, someone offering to pick up groceries for an elderly person, sharing generator power. These things matter. So as we wrap up here, let me give you the three most important things to remember from this forecast. First, Thursday and Friday are going to be dangerous travel days across a huge area. If you can avoid traveling, do it. Second, this isn't just about snow and cold. These wind speeds are genuinely dangerous and can cause damage and power outages. And third, this appears to be setting up a more active pattern for the rest of the winter. So this might not be the last big storm we see. Look, I know nobody wants to hear about a major storm right before the holidays. But the good news is that we can see it coming, we can prepare for it, and we know it will pass. The key is taking it seriously, preparing early, and not taking unnecessary risks. Stay in touch with family and friends in the affected areas. Be patient if they can't travel when planned. And remember that safety comes first. I'll be monitoring this system closely over the next few days and will update you if anything significant changes. Coming up in my next forecast, I want to dive deeper into those January patterns I mentioned and what they might mean for winter weather lovers. I'm also going to take a closer look at the post-holiday period because there are some interesting signals developing there too. Until then, take care of yourselves and each other. Be smart about travel decisions and remember, winter storms pass, but good preparation lasts. Thanks for spending this time with me tonight to talk about this weather. Stay safe out there, folks. This is Michael Thompson, and I'll see you in the next forecast, where we'll look ahead to what the rest of winter has in store. Take care, stay warm, and remember, we're all in this together.